Hello, hi, and welcome to Uganda Crossroads. My name is David Rubura. You know, Iris, thank you for watching our programs because you do a great job towards making sure that we put the information out there. But for today, we want, first of all, to celebrate uh, Nakai and Nanyondo for winning the gold medal for, you know, our country, Uganda. What they did was a great representation of how strong Ugandans are worldwide. So we appreciate all the efforts they put in to make sure that they bring back that gold medal. And always we come here to discuss about politics from east, west, central, and the northern part of Uganda to understand the key issues that happen or affect Ugandans, not only in Uganda, but also in the diaspora community. We live in the diaspora, but we always focus on ensuring that we have a better Uganda. Just like many of you, especially who in the diaspora, you left Uganda for different reasons. Some of you, you left for education. Others, you wanted to just have a better life because of the problems you are facing back in Uganda. And some, you were once kidnapped or even your relatives killed. But now you still come up and speak out strongly to see a better future. Now, that is what Uganda Crossroads is all about. We come here and break issues down to make sure that every one of us understands what happens. Now, guys, uh, I want to thank you. Uh, in the studio today, we have, let me start with the top. We have the People Power Coordinator representing the USA, Karim Muntambi. Last time we had him on Skype. Now he is in live in the studio. So the question that was, when will we have him again in the studio? He's with us today. We have Hamana Nebiona, we have Sarah Joy Bakanaisa, and Richard Miyambia. So the studio is really full with Basically, people power supporters. <laughs> but most people are not just about people power, but people who, who, wishes to see, who wish to see a better change in Uganda. So uh, I, I'm really glad that you guys, uh, I started with a statement, people power supporters. So it's you guys to defend whether yes or no. But let me start with uh, Richard. Richard, uh, you had a, did you have a great week? Yes, I had a very great week, but a very disappointing week again. Because this man, this security minister, attacked people power. All right, so you'll give us your reason yeah, soon. Yes. <laughs> I, I want to go straight to Karim. Haman, you're next to me. Did you have a yeah, nice week? My, my week was good. Uh, it was OK. All right. Uh, you even have a different microphone, meaning uh, you, your week was really better than ours. Sarah, your week? My week was good. Your week was good, Karim. Thanks for having me. Uh, I always uh, anticipate for a good week, and I think I had one. You had one? Yes. You think? And yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, could, sure. it, it, couldn't, it, could, uh, it couldn't have been better. Yeah. Oh, first of all, Karima, I want to thank you for whenever we you know, call you up and say, hey, can you come and be part of the show? You always uh, say yes. So I uh, really want to appreciate you for that. Uh, because you have big, uh, you know, you hold a big office for especially the movement. And so that means you're too busy, but we thank you. Just like these are the guys, they're always putting their time to come and be part of this amazing show. So, guys, there is nothing new. We always know that every week there's going to be something that comes up. So to me, it's not new. It's the, the daily thing that we eat, that, you know, uh, so that's the order of the day. But this week I started with, with uh, appreciating uh, the two ladies who represented Uganda in the world uh, competitions and they brought back a gold medal, which was really a very great move and that's what made my week so great. So I thank you also guys to, to say that you had a great week. But let's start with the, the key issue here. Last month, or actually a number of months, probably starting from last year, uh, there were issues with the land in Rusanj. I want to start straight away with that, because that's what made news actually yesterday. Uh, the court comes out to say that Medley Chichoncha is the owner of this land. We should remember, for the people who are watching us, that President Museveni, when he went there, he promised the victims that if things come out different, for example, if the court says no, Chichoncha is not the rightful owner of the land, these people are going to be compensated. Now, the results were totally different from what you, especially the victims, were expecting. It appears that the owner is Chichonch. Now, guys, I want to bring it on the table for you. And, and I will start with uh, Sarah. Sarah, you are the only lady, so uh, it's great for me to start with you. Uh, you were here like a couple of months. We were talking about the same issue. Bobby Wine went there. He promised uh, people that we're going to work out something. 
things were really different. The court ruled differently. What came into your mind when you learned about that? Because we even reported it on our CFTP network. What came into your mind? I think for the people of, of uh, Los Angeles, I am sorry that they are going through this, but um, it was expected. Because um, if it was meant to be done the right way, you see, issues with land, and this is not just Chichoncho, an ordinary Ugandan, this is Chichoncho working behind the government mafias, all these guys who think they, they are the omegas, or alpha and omega of Uganda. Because um, you look at, if you look at everything, how it happened was um, in the beginning, Chichoncho, the first time they went to court, um, the court said uh, people were wrongfully evicted because Chichoncho, the order they had to, for eviction was not for that land. It was meant for another land. So, first of all, before even court decides if this land belongs to Chichonjo or not, people from Lusanja were wrongfully evicted in the first place because the court order before the eviction was for another piece of land, not this particular piece of land. But then it comes down to Ugandans, and uh, because today I've been watching, the whole week I've been watching TV, there was also another area where an Indian is taking over land from people from Ugandans and people have been complaining to President Museven and saying, you know, we've become slaves and squatters in our own country. And um, it, it will come down to one thing, Ugandans, we know Pueveri them. For the fact that, uh, you know, these things, uh, you know, when we talk about these things and people don't take them seriously, it will come down, yes, it is true that Ugandans are going to be made, most of them, already they're made squatters because uh, it is so unfair for you to say the land belongs to Kichoncho and you do not compensate the people of Lusanja over, because these people bought plots of land. Whoever they bought it from, because the court would have been fair enough to find out who owned this land before, who sold this land. Because I'm sure the person who sold the land is available and, to and, these and, and all the things that uh, reached in, out, because the, the people who bought land from another individual who happens to be probably relative of the original owner, they say they bought land wrongfully. So it's not Chichoncho to blame. It's the people who bought land from a wrong person. No, but people should be compensated either way. It doesn't matter who they bought it from, because, but people bought land. People have agreements that they bought land. So really, if government cared and loved Ugandans and really, really wanted to take it another step further, they would have gone to who initially sold the land to these people. That person is available. And who owned the land before? When did Chichoncho own this land? All because right. this land, before it went to Chichoncho, it belonged to someone. So in between there, if it was, there was a transaction that was done that someone sold land and again sold to Chichoncho, these people must be compensated either way. But, uh, you know, you live in a government where, you know, many Ugandans, ordinary Ugandans don't have a voice. They are going to cry just as we saw them on TV, and they've been given uh, 30 days to live to vacate the land. Right. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, Richard, I want to come to you. You were, you were an addict by profession. Uh, you've been in this business for quite a long period of time. And the court ruled mm -hmm. that these people, one, are supposed to be out of Chichoncho's land within 30 days. Mm -hmm. And secondly, Chichoncho bought land mm -hmm. from the original owner of this land. Mm -hmm. So what comes into your mind? No, no, let, let, let's begin with the problem of the country. Because I've been following this land issue for a long time and I've been an opponent to existing political and economic system which involves the land. When Museveni came to power, because Museveni is a communist by nature of himself as a man, when he came to power, they come with two things, bread, land, and jobs. That's what they come with. When the, 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 the original people who owned land in Buganda, especially I'm talking in Buganda, their wealth was in land. The land was supposed to be passed on to generation and generation of the people. When Seven first came into government, the first thing he, he fought is the landlord, the real owner of the land. He got the land of the people and said that the landlords have no right over their land. It's the peasants. It was a peasant revolution. It's the peasant that Museven favors own land. He went further by giving them fake titles of a bibanja. Putting laws, you remember the 1999 uh, uh, land, land bill that was passed by this, uh, this man who was, uh, was, the former, was the former airline uh, managing director because he was our neighbor. We saw how he was neutralizing the land issue, the owner of the land. Before the land was useless, now when they came to power, they gave the land to the peasant to gain support into government. Now, over the years, 
after Museveni has gained power and is well established and the value of the land has gone up, now for themselves they go back to the land owners, the original land owners, and they go back and say, now we are buying the land from you. And you people, the squatters or the Bibanja owners must vacate. But let's look at this. L look, that's the exact problem of the country. It is Museveni who started all this. He took out the land from the owners of the land because if the land had remained to, on, into the original owners, you would go to the original owner, buy yourself a land from him. Now, he turns around and comes back and says, now, you, you don't have right to, to, to you, the Bibanja owners. Now it's the land owner because they are benefiting through the land because they have but money. They let's, look, let's, look anyway. at, let's look at the history that happened. Uh, this land contains about 85 acres, and Chioncho bought just uh, 3.89 acres from it, mm -hmm. uh, from the descendants of Paul Katawa's Vitara, Le, Vitara Beho, mm -hmm. who bought it from the late mm -hmm. Namasole Bagalayaze Lungse, mm -hmm. the mother of the fallen king of Uganda, mm -hmm. King Mwang. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the guy bought the land mm -hmm. from the mother mm -hmm. of the fallen king. Mm -hmm. Do we blame the government still, or we blame the uh, no, how did we reach there? Because the land was useless. Years, ten years ago, the land was useless. You had the title. I have titles in Uganda. You had a title that was useless. You, you were not supposed to control whatever is on your land. The government took away the power of the landlord. Ten years ago, 20 years ago, the land was taken away from the landowners. Now, Museven comes back after he's well established in power, his dictatorship, and comes back and says the land owner now has the right full uh, 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 ownership of the land, and I'm going to go and buy it from there, and I'm going to go to court. All right. So, Haman, one of the things that happened, the court asked Chichoncho to pay the original squatters on this land, and it appears to be that the four of them were clearly compensated, and that's why the court ruled that they are okay now to take the land. What do you come up with that? I think I think the the origin of this case is is saddening. Um, I you know compensation in Uganda. We were talking yesterday, and someone said that people are compensated based off their names. You know, Sekamate will get ten million, and Ainebiona will get twenty. Um, is it that a tribal the, conflict? Today? Yeah, the, it is. It is common, and and we have to accept these things in order to deal with them. Um, the the entire thing is a volongoto system, and I, for me, my my only cry. You know, we can go back to the history. We can talk about where the land came from, and and you know, and and how it has happened to this point. But my only cry is that. Ugandans have that responsibility. Ugandans have that responsibility to object to these things. You know, Bobby Wine encouraged people to stay on the land and establish themselves. Now, a poor Ugandan who sells tomatoes on the street has built a house from selling tomatoes. You've evicted him and compensated him with how much? 20 million. How much did they compensate him? Well, the question is, I think the question that would be there is, did these people buy land from the right people? I don't think I don't think when you're buying land, for instance, in America here, you I mean it's a different world, but if when you're buying land, it, it, it is it should be established that this property is owned by a certain ownership. Whose responsibility is that? And I think that's where it's trying to buy the land from. No, I don't I don't think it is our responsibility to judge. That is the government responsibility. The government's responsibility. And there's a lot of a lot of um, fake documents. You know, you personally have experienced this. My friend personally is going through a situation where he spent over eighty thousand dollars in Uganda trying to invest. And he he bought land and the next day they he found he started building poles, uh, placing poles to gazette the land. The next day, he found army officers with guns chasing his boys from the <coughs> land. He bought eighty thousand dollars. The problem, people say, is that Abana Uganda Bayai, and those elements are everywhere, even in the United States. I want people to understand that I have been ripped off here in America. You know, someone, a con man, comes to you, people on the phone call you, you get ripped off money. 
but the problem is how do you come back from that? How do you recover? How does your government protect you from situations like this? Because let's face it, in the entire world, there's always going to be bad people. But how protected are you from these bad people by the authorities? And that is why we are here today. If Ugandans clearly had someone to run to, they wouldn't be on TV crying. They would be in courts fighting these cases. Do you understand? So my pain is that we Ugandans do not have where to run to, and we need to fix that. How? How? We need to talk about these things constantly. They say that the, endu the, the endurance of tyranny is uh, condoned by the, you know, the acceptance of the oppressed, the people they oppress. So, as long as we say, hey, but to take a little genet to call to Tandike, Bupia, Mukama, what we are, they say, that is not how we should handle All this right, situation. So, uh, Karim, I want to bring you uh, right now on that issue that people power, when people power and the leadership went to Lusanja, uh, uh, you know, supported by other members of the community, uh, we expected miracles uh, at the end of the day. What we are seeing now is that the court ruled in the favor of Chichonji. What next for people power? Oh, the land doesn't, that, that, that plot doesn't belong to people power to start with. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you, because, because you went there and it made, you know, just like President Seven went there, I don't know whether he lied or he said the truth mm. that after the, the results that mm. the government is going to compensate these people. Now the difference is we don't know whether they are going to be compensated or not. Oh, no. Okay. What happens with the people power? To start with, the people in Los Angeles are Ugandans just like everybody else. And Losanja is in Chadondo East constituency, which uh, is represented by the Honorable Robert Chagulani. But to go back, uh, looking at the court order, the initial court order that had been issued to evict people from Losanja, it had been written by a judge who didn't have uh, jurisdiction in that area. The judge sits in Nawero, which is on the other side. Uh, the other uh, funny fact about that is the judge is a sister to Justin Catherine George Bamgemerere, who is in charge of uh, fighting these land, uh, issue, illegal, right. illegal land evictions. And her sister, who is also a judge, Esther Nasabu, is caught up in all this mess. And you want to ask yourself, where is Catherine George? I'm Gemeri, she's nowhere to be seen. The other thing is, let us, let us look at Losanja as a test for us as Ugandans. Today you have money, you buy land, and you give Ugandans 30 days to leave and go where. You're creating a crisis. It's an orchestrated crisis. But these it's, are, it's, these are, it's also illegal to trespass on somebody's land. And this is why most of the victims... Actually, Losanja... Is a local community. It has an LOC. And those people, uh, the people who used to live, had an LOC where they would report their cases to, which means they were never there illegally. Because when you come and decide to stay on a piece of land, uh, you, are, you are supposed to go and report to the local council. Let's, let's, look, at, let's look at the counter argument that came from Mr. Chancellor's uh, case. He said, mm. if I had a case at the land division court, mm are choosing the squatters of trespassing and state minister for land, Paris Namuganza and the primary education minister, mm -hmm. uh, Rosemary Senende, for inciting people to stay on his land. That is illegal to go and trespass on somebody's land. So when he goes and files a case against you, of course you're liable for that. Yeah, but when did Shishonjo buy this land? 2013. 2013. How long have those people lived yes. there? They did not come on in 2015 or 2016. Those people have been there. So it, it is argued, mm, it is argued mm, that he found 17 people no, on that land. No. And they were they are compensated fully. It, and, and, and and what is happening today is if these people have not come out to disagree with that, then is there a problem? Okay, okay, okay. Right. For argument's sake, for argument's sake, okay, let's say it was 17 people. He found 17 people. They're fully compensated. Uh-huh. Then in, that's 2013. Then after 2013, are we to believe? that 800 people decided to come and sit on this land after Chichoncho had bought it so that they get a compensation when he wins the case? 
And Chichoncho was tomorrow. quiet. And Chichoncho was quiet. He was quiet. He was seeing scorers coming onto the line. But uh, you see, just like everyone is saying here, um, you sometimes you wonder who does the government work for? Because at this point in time, when a government is really dimping and President Seven wants to hold on to power, where people really want to see change, I think you would you would expect him to do some things differently. For 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 you know for God's sake, at least having gone to Lusanja and lied to these people that they're going to be compensated, we would expect President Seven at least to come out and let these people find justice. Just like he said, there is no way if Chichoncho bought the land when there were seven people on the land, then we need to find out if really, really government cares. And looking at how these these are peasants, people who are selling tomatoes, normal Ugandans who live maybe below dollar. People, most of these people got loans to buy that land. People have gotten loans from banks. Maybe they are still choking on these loans to, to pay off the land they bought. So they would have, who sold the land to the 800 people she generally not find on the land? Because whoever sold land to them has the money. That person should be penalized and brought to book and brought to the courts of law. Because just like he said, these areas have an LC system of which if you're going to sell land, the LC1 should be able to sign, LC2 should be able to sign. They are in a LC3 that takes them, that is Nangam. You should have all these stamps and uh, signatures from all these uh, different uh, LCs that are concerned uh, that take up this particular area. So the chairman LC1, when land was being sold in that area, who was, who was the chairman, where was he, who was selling the land? Who was selling the land to these people if Chichoncho only found 17 people? Really, and, the, and, the, and, the, and this commission of, of, uh, of Catherine should be able to really help this. Because the scandals of land evictions and moreover to... Because at the end of the day, these but people, these, people, these argues, are the people who seven he needs more in so case he's, he's, he's looking for votes. Somebody, somebody argues that uh, you politicians are using this as an advantage to, to fight against the rich in the country of Uganda, in face of saying we are, we are helping the, the poor people, we are fighting for the poor people, you're using that advantage to you know, increase your votes as you're fighting the rich people who are... But what's the, percentage? The what's the percentage of the rich to the poor? In, the, in Uganda, to be sincere, what is the percentage of the rich to the poor? You have the poor having the biggest part of the percentage, you have a little bit of the middle, middle class, because the middle class and those who do not have really lingers, because most of the people you call the middle class in Kampala are the fraudsters, the con men, people who are into involved, involved in the gold scam, people who are involved into theft, are the middle class, people who are throwing money around in bars and showing off to have money, ask them where is the source of income. They are all into gold scams, duping all the white people in sorts of funny businesses. Those are the middle classes you have in Uganda. The I few also, rich people, yeah, sure. the likes of, uh, <laughs> so, uh, the likes of I, I give, and the rest, give those are the chance. few rich people you have in Uganda. I also, I also want to ask you a question. Uh, being rich is not a crime, and you can be as rich as you want. But the problem is that how is is how your rich, how your wealth affects other people. If you're being rich to oppress other people, I think, I think it is okay for us to tell you what you're doing is wrong. You don't you see that? I think it is, it is morally upright for someone to say, whether rich, poor you know, strong, bad, clever, whatever, as long as you're doing something wrong, every human being, it's human responsibility. This is why I say it's not, you don't have to be so smart to talk about these things. It is a human responsibility. It's a God-given right for us to say, what you're doing, I think is not wrong, is, is not right. And true, Samu, there is so much land in Uganda to purchase. You don't have to purchase land where eight, 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 eight hundred people are. Uh, All right. <laughs> you know? I wanted to add on something here. So yeah. How are we going to fix this as people power? That is the two question. Because that, yeah, right. the, the, so. the, 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 what you still need to stand is what is in Buganda, Busoga, Bunyoro, Toro, everywhere. How are we going to fix it? We are going to use a political system which is federalism. And the land is going to belong to the state where it was. Because, for example, for me, I'm a Muganda. I don't know the land the way it is distributed in, in Ibunyoro. I don't know the way I, the land I, is distributed. I, wanna, I want to leave yes. that. I want to because leave that topic, in Ibuganda, I want to no, ask no, you no, a question. No, wait, wait, as yeah. I finish this. Because in Ibuganda, we have the Buganda Land Board. We have the white paper in Entebbe where the original owners are traced. These people who have fake titles with the political system and Museveni, his bureaucracy has created this. The way to solve this is we, we are going to take the, the land back 
to the federal to, structures where it was I, I, I want, before. I want, I want, um, before I leave the topic, I want these guys to answer this question. Yes. Aren't you guys putting your organization and the movement and the leadership that is coming up next mm -hmm. uh, at risk mm -hmm. when you say you're going to take back the land from the people? How no, 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 no. Not from the people, not from the people. The, manage, the management of the land, for example, give you give you Massachusetts in America. The land, Trump does not have authority over the land of Massachusetts. The governor and the people of Massachusetts have ownership through the governor. That's how the, the, the land is distributed. It's controlled by the governor. But Museveni cannot come from Entebbe and control the land of Kisanja. Museveni cannot come from Entebbe and control the land in, in, in Ibusoga. Museveni cannot come from State House and goes to Madi. That's what is happening in Uganda. That's what has because, brought the confusion. Uh, all right. So <laughs> yes, that's why, how we are so going guys, to solve these things. Off. I want to take you off from that. Because, but the, the real thing is, uh, the, the leadership you vote for may be the real problem that is affecting uh, most of Ugandans. That is open to you guys to think about or even comment. But let me go, let me go straight away. Uh, one of uh, the things that I'm seeing right now is, Karim, you as a people park coordinator, mm -hmm. You're so strong that you're still putting on that beret. As we speak today, the government of Uganda this week mm -hmm. came up with a policy and gazetted that no more putting on of those berets. What next? I'm not going to ask you, Karim. I will start with Haman here, who is next to me. What next for people power? Especially, you guys are in America, so you're free to put on those berets and all that. And remember, the government very soon is going to also ban your overall. It's also going to ban the red T-shirts and everything. What next, Haman? Um, my, you see, the time has come for change to happen. Red Berry singing people power on the street, you know, being shut down, whatever happens, the time for change isn't happening. Whether they, for instance, of all the problems Ugandans have, land being grabbed, people being killed with Buyondo, you want to arrest people for putting on red. You see how immoral and <laughs> inco in incoherent that is. Um, you are a government that is supposed to protect people, and you're arresting people for putting on red beret. And then, then you give a directive to release others who are arrested on idle and disorder. You see, it, it baffles my understanding. I don't understand how these people came to power. I don't know if there is, you know, um, brain matter degeneration. I can't understand. It is illogical. It does not add up. And so, for the part of Ugandans, you know, we were, we've been told, and I think we already know, we already know that, you know, put on whatever you want. Put on whatever you want. Um, put on a red cloth. Put on a Museveni red hat. I like, <laughs> I like people who have come up with that. Put on whatever you want. And, and, and putting on a color should not make you forget your problems. Remember that whether you put on yellow or red or green or black or your anime man, you still buy sugar for 4,000 kilos. You still buy fuel for 8,000 or whatever they pay for fuel. You will still be evicted even though you're given $10 million to buy land. Eventually, you will get evicted. Kaihura is now in the village. Let us not forget those reasons why we put on the red and focus on the red. Let us remember and keep ourselves in check and know that what we are standing for are the problems that hurt us the most. All right, so, uh, I think um, one, one of the things we need to make clear to Ugandans is that Ugandans must understand that uh, the barret that, that was zagated has uh, the coat of arms. It is very clear, yes, it's a barrette, but it has the coat of arms. So let's not confuse it with the people power barrette because the people power barrette has, uh, it has, when you see this, it has a logo that has people power with the fist. So they are completely, completely different. What they zagated, I think what they looked at, they thought maybe at one point in time, people are going to start wearing a barrette with a coat of arms. Those two items, if you put them even for a, for a, 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 just a, for a kid that is smart, that is four, five years, they can be able to differentiate and say, mommy, daddy, this is red, but it has a coat of arms. You, this is red, but it has another logo that has people but power. You, you are creating a, a situated threat because 
You're putting on almost the same colors. Like no, but, uh, you, you, uh, first of all, one <laughs> thing you must understand. <laughs> and UPDF does not own the color red. If they owned it, they would trademark it. They don't own the color red. So, are you saying, unless you're telling me they own the color red, that's why they went ahead and zagated. They don't own the color red. If they own it, let them go and trademark it. That is for starters. There's no confusion about that. There's no confusion. How many people, how many, has it been a crisis that you see what is happening in Kampala, that people putting on red barrets have confused? First of all, the UPDF has a uniform. They have a uniform of which people power has not tampered with the uniform. No one is putting on their uniform. But I think the bottom line is, um, I think Moseven and his advisors are really, really, you know, advising so wrongly that uh, he's worried about a piece of cloth and his biggest problem of which he's forgetting. I think Museven should be worried about the 40 million Ugandans who want change than the piece of cloth. Because what if tomorrow, just like one mentioned, what if tomorrow Ugandans decide, okay, we won't wear barrettes, but we're going, going to wear, because I've seen hats. I have a hat. I have a cape that has a logo. I can as well put on a, a cape. What if tomorrow we decide to say we're putting on Father Christmas capes? All right. What if so, we decide to put round caps? So the problem is not the barrette. Because what if tomorrow we say, let's all go and tint our, red, our hair red? What is going to happen? These guys are so really, really, they're so scared of the unknown. And they're focusing. You see, just like you mentioned, of all the problems that are in Uganda, yesterday I saw a post on, uh, on Kakensa's page, where outpatients of cancer, cancer patients, who cannot afford, who are coming from a country, who cannot afford transport back and forth, are sleeping outside the ward, a cancer patient, with their immunity, because when you have... One, one, one can so argue... So those one, are things the government one, should be able one, to focus on. One can on. argue that uh, maybe the security department is trying to do its level best. To, you know, to, to safeguard Uganda. So just like the Ministry of Health should also come up... Let, let me, before even, before even in Tambi, <laughs> let me just interject a little bit. If you say the security department, why are we having... I think their major, major focus should be on the Ugandans murdered right now. What has the UPDF, what has the police done on the Ugandans kidnapped and murdered on a daily basis? Correct. That should be their focus. All right, have we seen in, the Karen. people they've paraded that are murdering people, they claim they're murdering people. You saw, you saw the guys who, had, uh, who, were, who killed the Boda Boda guy. Were they wearing red barrettes? All right, so Karim, I want to bring you in. Uh, first of all, you're putting on military stuff, uh, red barrettes. <laughs> so the, you're confusing the situation. That's why you have increasing murder cases. So study from there. Uh, I think it's been a year. Uh, the Red Beret is celebrated, celebrated a year about two weeks ago, ever since its inception. And if it had a problem, this problem has been happening for a year. So if you are to, if you are to gazette something, there has to be a problem that you're trying to remedy. There has not been anything that the Red Beret movement has done to, uh, to scare the army generals with their guns and everything, that, with their members and everything. So you are coming for somebody with a red beret. You want to ask yourself, how far is this going to go? Today they are coming for the red beret. Tomorrow they are going to come for your underwear. Check if it's red, you got to take it off because it looks like the one uh, uh, Eddie Tumene is wearing. So you, 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 you take that you want, back. I, I, I want, ah, no, come on. I can't take that back. These people are naive. These people are in panic, so they are trying to find. I saw General Eddie Tumini about was it two days ago, talking about the Red Barrett movement is part of a global terrorist organization. And I like Eddie Tumini talking terrorism, a person who fought in a rebel movement, the most successful terrorist rebel group in the world, the NRM, the NRA Army. They have been successful for over 33 years. The repressive government of Museveni, the people who are responsible for killing 500 people in Kasese are talking terrorism. The people are uh, responsible for displacing our people in Apa. The people are responsible for terrorizing the people in Los Angeles and kicking them off their land. The people are responsible for the disappearance and killing of women are talking terrorism. It really buffered me to see Eddie Tumine, a person who came with a gun, who fronted Kadogos to kill people talking terrorism, of people are just wearing a red barret. It beats my understanding. Uh, I, I, I don't even... And, and you're risking your lives. Yes. Oh, so okay. let, let's <laughs> first begin here, where he began on, on Eddie Tumid, because that's what the energy of, of sadness came to me this week. Now, what was the seven fear, fear in the red belts? Let's, let's go back to these movements. 
Mao Zedong used the, used the what? The farmers, the peasants. The, the, the peasant revolution and overthrew the, 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 the national government. In China, the whole of China. They never failed. Let's go to, to, to the Soviet Union, where it all began. Uh, Lenin used the what? The, 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 the workers' revolution and overthrew the government. Now, these people have seen that the people power movement with their red belt is a revolution they, they cannot defeat. And that's why they're labeling it as a terrorist organization. Furthermore, I saw what, 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 what this man said, that they are going to use martial law. Now we are going to see, because these people, which of the two is going to go to hell? Any to me and his group? Or oh, the people? They are, they, are, they are planning to kill, because this is so serious. And lastly, let's, let's go where things are going. They say that his worry was the alteration of the world order, the political order of the government which Museven established today. Because what Museven told, <coughs> sorry, that as he had established the national resistance movement with its socialism ideology, the way things are volongoto now, Honorable Chagwe was going to come and take over from that very system and maybe let fight. What is Museven's worry of the people power? Is this movement is going to uproot his political and economic system Dumping in trash and build a new country. That's what Honorable Chagwani said that he's going to build a new country. And now, what is worrying Museven and what, where Uganda must be very careful is this what is hap happening? Muhammad Museven are against a, a Soviet Union and has brought nuclear. He's going to build nuclear in Uganda. You people that are watching us tonight, tell your friends this is the revolution where we must approach Museven out of power. Either you want Uganda, which is like a North Korea, untouchable, because that's why it's building the nuclear bombs in Uganda. That's what it's going to do. Or we want a Uganda, which is like a China. Which, or we want a Uganda, which is like a, uh, uh, Russia today. I, so, I, I, I have something to say about that. I think that um, Ugandans don't have to worry too much. These people are not as sophisticated as we think. Because a uh, security minister, you see the word terrorism carries too, like, too much content. It is a heavy word to label someone. Now, the security minister, if it was a Kadogo or a policeman who was, uh, um, what's the word, paranoid, um, said that, maybe that's okay. But an entire minister on national TV, you set people in a state of panic. Because someone is putting on red in the public, and, and that's the reason why and, you and, and, be arrested. And, and, and yeah, yeah, that is that is fine. I mean, Mandela was arrested for twenty-seven years, and he is one of the most celebrated Africans in the world. So that is fine. That is typical of of revolutions and movements. Now, the problem, my concern is that that the hunger for an opportunity to kill Ugandans that these people are used to. Exactly. Um, these people have a hunger to kill anyone who says something different from what they say. Even though you're saying the same thing but differently. If you're saying policemen should have better pay. You, you see how Chagulani tabled that bill? Policemen need our men in uniform deserve a better pay. He's saying the same thing they are saying. But just because he's saying it differently, they, are, they cannot tolerate that, and it is wrong. It is not Chagulanyi to speak for the policeman. He's a Ugandan. He has a, you have a responsibility as a Ugandan to speak about those things. So what, I'm look, what I see it as is an opportunity. Like these are men who are used to all they know is bloodshed. They are trying to seek any opportunity to shoot. They have so much military wear, yet we don't have any medicine in, in hospitals. They have so much military wear that they don't know where to use it. And they are going to use it on fellow Ugandans. But let me tell, <laughs> let me tell Ugandans that these people were Kuba goal. You see, they claim to have 60,000 army men. And we also know that of the 60,000, half of them are ghost soldiers. Tebabakanga! Me, I'm telling you. Right, so if Ugandans, let me tell you right now, if Ugandans, in half of Uganda, half of the cities, let me say Hoima, Bojiri, Jinja, Arua, rose up, 
Museveni will not be able to contain that situation. All right, Even so, Kampala alone, because from the last census, Kampala had 12 million people. I don't know how many they are right now. And uh, maybe one thing I must note, I think Ugandans should clearly see that the army or the army and police are, you know, before they are largely involved in Ugandan politics and they are not hiding it, of which they're supposed to be nonpartisan. But you've seen clips of armed officers talking about, you've seen El Tumwine, you've seen Otafire. They are so scared because, first of all, they came through the gun. They've not, maybe they expected people to go to the bush and then they, they, they get an opportunity to shoot and kill because all they know, they are rebels and uh, they are lucky being rebels and they've stayed in power for 33 years. So it's going to be tough on Ugandans, but just like you said, they are looking for an opportunity to start killing. I think, you know, 33 years, because they came through blood, and that's all they know. And uh, because, you know, as you, when, we grow, we, when we were growing up, we had so many stories of the Luero, the Luero and all that. But I believe definitely someone who wants power more would kill more people and put it on the city. All right, all right. So, so, sorry. Yeah, I, I want to thank you guys for, for raising all these issues. And, and, and to all our viewers, we really appreciate all the work that you're doing on um, watching all these programs. Uh, keep commenting, keep sending uh, your views. And, of course, if you have anything, uh, some of the things that you wish us to adjust on, you can send us a direct message. We'll be in position to respond to you and, of course, improve somewhere. But uh, you guys are talking about uh, Ugandans coming up to demonstrate or even show their solidarity. What we're seeing is a divided opposition. Right away from the recently concluded by elections to now, nobody Mao was coming up to say that people should be worried against the radical populists, which happens to be the popular movement that is going on, the, the people power, that people should go back to the foundation, which are the political parties. Uh, I want to start with Karim again mm -hmm. uh, before I bring in Richard. The opposition is not really convinced that the People Power Movement is the solution to Uganda's problems. No, what, what you have to be convinced is the state of, of is the status quo. Does it need change? If if you are really convinced that we need better services, that our people deserve a better better education, our people need uh, deserve better health services, our people deserve better infrastructure. It's your time to rise up. It doesn't matter whether you're rising up as a political party or as an individual. It is your time to rise up. Whoever wants to group himself, in, uh, lock themselves into political parties, I mean, I can't speak for them. I really can't. I am speaking for people who have, who have stood up and realized that this has to be their personal responsibility to take their power back. I want, I want to correct something. You media people have... <laughs> You see, this struggle is not about people power or FDC or DP while people are getting shot. This struggle is not about, uh, you know, what color people are putting on while they are being evicted. If you are... Me, I, I, I encourage people, of course, to mobilize and, and come together with people power. But wherever you are, if you are not satisfied if you are even satisfied with this situation, because Kaihura was satisfied. Yeah, but, Yesterday, but, but, but this you, guy, you let me blame, tell you about... Let, let, me, let me stop you a little bit. You are blaming the media for reporting, which, uh, for reporting facts. The fact is, Nobat Mao, um, Patrick Kamenyat, are not happy with the purpose, uh individuals that are coming up, the radical individuals, individuals who are coming I up. Think, I think you is have... Is that wrong? I think you have your quotes wrong. That is Mwenda. No, but Mao has never said he's not happy with people power. Um, <laughs> who else did you say? Uh, power. Let, let, power let, has let never me said. Read, let me read you according to New Vision. Let me read you according to the New Vision. That is media also, that, but keep going. Which, 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 is, which is true. Which is true. Yes, that is media. As to us as media, we are supposed to bring out information and tell the public what exactly is going on. People are not happy with public are politicians. Yeah. Now, when you look at the trend right now, we, of course, uh, someone may say that maybe he was attacking Honorable no, Robert Tabani. But, uh, but, but, uh, but, uh, so, but can I say something? <laughs> it is a, it is a but, uh, media but can I say something? Right. All these other seasoned politicians have seemed known to be happy with whatever Chagulani is doing because opposing is also a job to them. Remember, these guys get money from funders, they write proposals, of which right now they are overshadowed by Chagulani. 
I guess the, the flow of money coming to them has been slowing down because at this point in time, if you're not working with Chagula, you're on your own. So don't blame them. They, because, and um, you know, they keep, because, uh, and sometimes I hate to see when people think you should be the face of opposition. And last time I saw um, Ingrid Tunawe when he, she was with Joel on, um, on one of the, was it the spot on or something, uh, on NTV. You see how these politicians behave. Um, because she was saying, oh, your people are telling Dr. Besige to go. Where should he go? No one is telling Dr. Besige to go. But as politicians, people become wary, people become tired, and young people come every day with better ideas, good ideas. There is nothing wrong with advising and keep away, let other people also take on the mantle. Because also what happens in opposition, the problem we are facing at the same time, sometimes as much as we want him seven to go, also the opposition members who have been carrying the mantle for 20 almost plus years, they are not, they're not backing down. They still want to carry on. I'm like, what more are you going to offer that this new person is, is not going to, going to offer? So I don't, uh, and when you look at Opoa, what has Opoa done ever since he became FDC president? He's, he's one of the dormant presidents FDC has ever oh, had. Right. <laughs> so and, so <laughs> I, I, I totally get it when they get so mad and annoyed because Chagulani and his team, they are really, really aggressive. They are really, really, uh, you know, they are vibrant, they are active, they want to see things moving. And you see some of these opposition leaders, they really want to sit back. They want to, you know, keep patting Museveni. You saw them one time going to, was that the mediation? iPod. iPod. <laughs> what is it for? What are you discussing with Museveni but after Sarah, 33 years? Sarah, but Sarah, your, your frustration is mischannelled. It's a new vision causing <laughs> No, but, I'm, but I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> no, even if it's not new vision, you guys, if you've been watching... It is this David no, who, are, been, who are you, causing if this If you case. watch what has been going on in the country, and not even from that statement alone. You see, you remember there's a time, uh, there's a, the front line where everyone was, when there's a front time, Nobat Mao and the rest were on the front line with Joel, and you saw all of them, they are all opposition leaders, all going in and attacking Joel. They should have, there was also a phone upon and all the rest. Instead of, you know, they should have been supporting him, they should have been, you know, pushing up ideas that are making Uganda better. Everyone zeroed on to attacking. Uh, Joel, so I do not understand, you know, as much as the one seven to go, everyone is looking at their own kicker, like, you know, Chagulanyi is really, and I'm telling you, their major focus yeah. is the donation money comes for, coming I, from abroad, and Chagulanyi is stepping no, no, in again, there, again, uh, again, uh, and again, it is affecting Again, there was someone moderating who was from the media, so it's the media who is <laughs> okay. causing this case. Right. Let, let, let me make a statement here. Let, viewers must understand that even we, we can see. Uh, this uh, Mao is not a politician. We call it politician for Dongo. This is for Dongo. He comes like a DP, DP, DP. In the middle of the night, he goes to seven and gives him money. I can't even analyze. You? Okay, I can't even you analyze, are... but we have some things to, to discuss. What do we do as people power to save the country? As your position. Most... What do you do as your position? Okay, okay. First of all, we must, as early as possible, as what they are doing in Uganda, we must involve the international community in the affairs of Uganda at the highest level. Why? Okay, why? Why should I say like this? I left on a gadget here. Why should I say like this? The second thing, if you look at the conflict of Yugoslavia, Herzegovina and Bosnia, exactly that's what is going to happen in Uganda. Because what you see now today is Kaihura, because I, I don't think you saw what, he, what he, uh, Ofono Pondo did. He went all the way to the farm of Kaihura to visit him. The second day, he comes and makes a, a, a press conference and says, you know what is happening? If these American people have any, something about our ministers that they are corrupt and our army officers that have killed people, let, us, let them give us the evidence so that we, we, are, we try them there. So what do I mean? By, what do I mean? Which, which gives um, the country there are so many. Kaihura Bamutuari de Samoni. International courts of law. But so what do we do? These people are, are going to kill our people. 
but we must hold them accountable. An international committee must help us to account them accountable so that they take them to head. That's how this man who is shouting today, or your minister of, of, of security who is shouting to say labeling people power as a terrorist organization, he's going to end up in head if he kills our people. Let me take you back. Yes. What is the opposition going to do? And I want to finalize with that. Haman disagreed with the media, mm. but I want to bring in uh, exactly what Nobat Mao said. And he quoted from Adolf Hitler's way of governance. Adolf Hitler rose because, no, sure, sure, sure. because Germans were tired of political establishment after humiliation in World War I. You know what happened? Holocaust. In France, Emmanuel Macron rose with his end marche, but his own supporters are now turned against him. Now, if you get in line with what's going on today, people support Hunter Bobby Wine. And according to the statement, if you really interpret it logically, mm -hmm. it's like after people are going to turn against Hunter Bobby Wine, who is looked into as a, a, a radical individual who people, you know, people support so much. So uh, I want you guys, uh, Karima wanted to bring in on that because you, you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yes, come in. To start with, this is a struggle. And when we are in the struggle, there are so many people who have different interests. Some people want the country to be liberated. Some people have their self-vested uh, interest. They want to elevate to themselves. So <clears throat> uh, seeing uh, Joel being attacked, or one of our own being attacked by the opposition, it is not unique to Uganda. There are so many countries that have, we, we live in a multi-party system. You expect that. Everybody wants to advance uh, their own political agenda, their own political ideology, but uh, reality narrows the competition. So what is happening in Uganda today, the reality is that people are standing with Honorable Chagulanya. People are, starting, are, are standing with the People Power Movement. So whether you are from NRM, whether you are from FDC, you realize that the, the issues that the People Power uh, Movement is trying to advocate for are the issues that go from the local person to all the way to the top of the food chain in our country. So <clears throat> whether other political um, leaders are, are against us, we expect that. We did not expect it to be a smooth uh, kumbaya to the White House. We understand it's going to, it is a struggle. So some people are going to be with us, and on the last day, they are going to betray us. Some people are going to stand with us, then at night, they will go somewhere else. Some people are going to stand side by side with us until 2021. So um, I understand where that is coming from, but I also understand that we have a responsibility as Ugandans to look at to look at the future and say, what do we really want right now? Do we want to go back to, the, to, 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 to these, you know, going back to our small groups of political parties and fight ourselves um, with each other? Or do we want a Uganda for everybody? So that's where we stand as people power. All right, so um, guys, I want to thank you so much. <laughs> we, are, we are running out of time. But uh, to, to all our viewers, we really appreciate all the time you're putting in to making sure that uh, this show stay strong and of course the information we get from different corners of the world what you're doing is amazing uh but now you know we wanted to finalize with that uh issue of the opposition and how you guys are faring because what we saw in 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 hoima was a clear indication of what's going to happen in in in, in um a clear indicator of what's going to happen in in 2021 the division. I, I, I don't want the media to start driving that the, narrative the, the, the because media. you guys don't speak for Ugandans. <laughs> Everybody votes for themselves. No, but if, I, if, but you, I, if, you, guys, if you guys reality. continue driving that narrative, you make the government in power keep pushing. But, but let's look at facts. Let's, let's look no, at but facts. why don't you compare it to, to what happened in Bujiri, what yeah. happened in Junior, what happened in, uh, in, in Tandu? Because, because the, difference in is, yeah. the difference is what we saw in Hoima, uh -huh. especially as the media, mm. I'm, I'm speaking just on my behalf and as, as a media. Mm. Uh, sometimes you have to Now defend, <laughs> we have to defend the media. <laughs> what we saw as a media, what we covered was, we saw all these political party leaders mm. coming together the first day or the second day during the campaigns. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, some of, the elite, some of the leaders started coming out. Oh, this is not a ready thing. FDC is the owner of this politician who is a candidate. Days went on. We started reduce, seeing the number of key leaders reducing until we saw Bobby Wine going back as people power. 
campaigning for uh, Nyakatoa Sinasi. But what, what did you say in Ginger? What does that mean? When Congress was run, what did you say in Ginger? Can I make a submission? Sure. You see what happens, what, because unless you see, again, when it comes, when I see media diving into this and uh, analyzing it because uh, in, in a way that is so uh, premature and um, not even professional, I don't even blame them because Ugandan media is kind of, um, they, they are, I think they, they, they don't do research or they don't look far or they don't, they are not well, well. Can I answer that quickly? No. Let, let me answer <coughs> what goes on. In Uganda, when you're going for a TV show and you're putting on a red berry, they ask you to take it off before you sit on the set. So, because mm. they are trying to stay in business. <laughs> so go on, finish. What, one of the things I want you to understand is uh, if you look at, if you, you're really going to be either in media and analyze everything properly and well, see what happened in Ginger, it's Bujiri, they, particularly the campaign in Bujiri. You had uh, some of the opposition leaders standing with the Basalirwa, and you had FDC, and uh, it's uh, the likes of Namboze and all, and uh, Lukwago standing on their side. But uh, we had a clear win at the end of the day. So I don't think we should use uh, Hoima as a yardstick. For me, by the way, myself looking into the campaigns from social media, already I saw the candidate, uh, uh, FDC fronted was weak. I would say basically, by the way, FDC needs to thank Bobby Wine. They had someone who was so, she wasn't eloquent, so she was timid. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. She was timid. She wasn't aggressive. I would see, you know, when you're going into a well, campaign, well, I, you do not bring a lady who is sir, timid. You do not bring a lady who lacks confidence. She wasn't confident. Even maybe, you would see her standing on the podium. Maybe, maybe, maybe there was in, no confidence. She was let kind me bring of timid. In Karim. Karim, she was uh, kind Asinasi of overwhelmed. Is a very stronghold of people power. Uh, Asinasi really supports people power. Though she's FDC, she's a strong lady within people power movement. Mm. Sarah Joy says. There were some limitations that she wasn't really confident. We cannot, to, we cannot so blame the victim. We cannot blame the, the vic victim. We cannot blame the victim. If we start blaming the victim right now, we are going to end up blaming ourselves at the end of the day. We know what happened in Hoima. Everybody saw uh, during the day uh, the media was reporting different results. Then after they are telling us we are incompetent. During the day when they were counting the votes that were coming in, the stop holes that were coming in, they were showing that we were leading. Then in the night, the media comes back. The whole day, they kept on praising us. They said, oh, the people power is taking this. According to the results that are coming out, according to the people we have been interviewing, people power is winning. So the next day, they, uh, they didn't even try to audit. Say, oh, oh, ask themselves, what happened? Because during the day, this is what we are happening. If we're following the trend as it was, this could have been the anticipated result of mm, yeah, for the, but they what they did oh they went with the flow and they brought and and and, 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 and now <laughs> they are blaming us of incompetence they are and, not and even the, trying the to do commission. investigative journalism yeah. to find out exactly what happened <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> i told you and we are blaming the victim i can never i can never apologize for our guys i'm going to take you nyakato was a very strong candidate NRM had a very weak candidate. The people of Hoim, I still congratulate them for standing up and, and, and voting. And, and it was, and maybe if I could just add a little thing. FDC are cowards because it, they, it showed how, you know, the, the typical, I don't even know, you know, having been in the game of opposition politics for a long time, they should have done better because if you start backing down or because people power, they should have been... There's some people you, you know, want to unite let with. Me, let me, let no, me say but something. As, we should, as right. much as we want to unite, there are certain things we are going to pin, pin, point out. This is your candidate. But if you, you cannot, because I was just imagining if uh, Bobby Wine would go on to one rally and Besige was on another, and then, the, you know, they split the time within that whole constituency and converse it very well, it would have been better. But uh, everyone, people, people are kind of, oh, you know, they've taken over. This is not a time for taking over. This is a time of everyone putting their efforts and time let together. Me, let me say something. You see, three weeks before an election, politicians come and say, hey, they are going to take your oil. They are going to, not just politicians, like typical politicians, people who do politicking for work, leave alone people who are fighting for people's rights, but typical politicians plus the media. Three weeks before oh, no, an no, no, election. No, minus the no media. let me, let me finish. <laughs> you know, the people of Hoima are suffering. They are going to take your oil. 
you know, you, you people have problems, you can't afford medical, there's no hospital in Hoima, the road that they constructed has no cars running on it because fuel prices are crazy and they will kill you on the road because of an accident or whatever. They come here presenting the problems of the people. This is three weeks before an election. But after the election, all those problems disappear and now the problem is who won and who lost. Why don't you remember and discuss the problems of the people? Why are you so focused on who won? I've seen NRM politicians and all they are boasting about is the people are still suffering. Now, let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Right. This is the thing. This is a fact. If you do not pass participate and this goes to the local person i'm not i'm not going to discuss with politicians and media i'm going to talk to the local people because this is the only opportunity i get if you do not come out and vote now in uganda it is beyond voting because we've been ruled for 33 years if you do not come out and a vote b you have to take an extra step b protect, protect vote. that vote be proactive you lose your right to complain you cannot come out and, and say, oh, my, I, can't take my, I can't afford to take my child to, to school. When you stayed at home and said, ah, so that is, that is basically my point. But I beg you, David, when you're speaking next time, and all your media friends, tell them to not, for, not to forget the problems of the people. And sometimes you guys forget that you're also part of us. You're also people, you have problems like us, and you buy fuel for 4,000 or 8,000 shillings a liter. So don't forget your problems and you know, enjoy that optical politics of this one. All right, so, so, all right, so I'm gonna thank you. Uh, Richard, your final uh, say. Yeah, and for then, me, what I'm telling the people, we especially that are in the international community, in the diaspora, how do we get a free and fair election? We have to work, start working now, because if you are going to work, wait upon what was done in, Kase in Hoima, it was rigged. How would we support it? No, how, no, how would we stop such a rigging in the country? Next time, uh, I guess next Saturday, we will have a, a bigger discussion on elections, because mm -hmm. You guys, every time we come, every time you go in different media houses, what you say, there was rigging, there was rigging. You've never solved the problem. You always go into these elections knowing that you're going to be rigged, uh, you're going to, everything's, my practice is going to be there, the army is going to be deployed and everything. But you still no, continue but, uh, to but, go into But if there's the, evidence one, of rigging... One of the things... David, if there's one of evidence... The things hold, hold on one second. Hmm. If they show you that in, an, in a government state house, can they have votes? You want us to say there was... The, I the don't understand, David. What are you no, saying? But, <laughs> but, but, again, but again, it's so absurd because uh, this time it, it was evident and you saw the videos that are before... I think before it was there, um, I didn't see it very much. Um, the UPDF and the police being involved in the rigging they are meant to, put, to keep law and, and order, the and they are not carrying the gun. So, as I think uh, we need, um, what we need to do is, uh, we are, just like we said, we are going to discuss it more, and uh, we need to bring it to the public and to the world, because if the person, the people who carry the guns, and who are, you know, are very thirsty to shoot and kill, are the ones rigging, then uh, we are... We are then, heading in a very I long direction. I remember when to finalize with you. The Electoral Commission came out to say that the opposition rigged the votes. And the president supported the cause too. He said, hey, we need to do further investigations into what happened hey, exactly in Hoima. And are we expecting that in 2021? Karim, finish up. Let I, me go. I, I think what we need uh, to look at, first of all, is the electoral reforms. We need them as early as tomorrow. Uh, this has been, uh, it has taken precedent. Most of the times we've had elections, there has been rigging, there has been stuffed ballot papers, there have been pre-ticketed, you know, uh, ballots. And guess what? The courts of law always agree that all these things happen, but they never get remedied. Yeah. Always say, okay, hey, um, we agree there was rigging, there was this and this, all these malpractices happened, but uh, they were not too much enough to influence yeah. because you, yeah, a crime yeah. remember a crime 
is a crime. It does You can't say, ah, ah, we stole his money, but it wasn't too much. A crime. <laughs> you were free a crime. for it. You crime. cannot say, you know what, uh, you know, All right, I, guys. I assaulted this person, a but crime. I did not remove their eye. A crime they, they is a crime can. as long as you, <laughs> you, 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 you produce you, you, enough you, you, evidence. You, you, you. All right, guys, thank you so much. <laughs> I, can't, I can't go far from this. Uh, we are running out of time, so but we want to thank you guys. Uh, Richard, I want to thank you, Kareem, Sarah, and Herman. I want to thank you guys so much for always putting in your time to come here and, and we discuss these key issues about Uganda and where we want to see the future of the country. But for our viewers who always watch our programs, we really appreciate all the time you put in to make sure that the information goes out there, you share, you send your comments. Really, sometimes it's hard for us to to read all the comments that come in because there are so many, but we really encourage you to send as many as possible. We always bring them back in our discussion that come in uh, in the following week. So we really appreciate that. And we are working on our phones so that you can always call in and you know, we have a discussion from you guys. So we want to thank you so much. Keep watching uh, Comfort Television. Coming up next, Love, Sex and Money, Denise and Kasenge. If you, if you really love if you really like love discussions, that's the best show, too. So we want to thank you so much. Keep watching Comfort Television. Keep watching You're Gonna Crossroads. See you next Saturday. Have a great week. Remember this. As much as politics is there, politicians are there to convince you. You always need to work hard to have a better future. Rich people are not controlled by politicians. Have a great week. Thank you.